In the previous few videos, we've been trying to understand and work on how transistors work. Transistors are these marvelously small little devices here that have three terminals on them. And we know transistors have three terminals here, called the base, emitter, and collector. And we know we can turn a transistor on like a switch if the voltage on the base is at least six tenths of a volt higher than that on the emitter. And if that happens, the transistor will be so-called in its on state and a current is allowed to flow between the collector and the emitter. So what we're going to do in this video is just use the, an example transistor here to show sort of the active electronics that can, we can begin to develop. And we're going to see how a transistor nightlight might work. I think we've all seen these before. These are these lights that seem to come on automatically when it gets dark out. And it turns out we can build one fairly easily with a transistor. So the first thing we're going to need to do in a project like this is monitor the light level in the room. And we've seen many times how we can do that with one of these photoresistors here cadmium sulfide photoresistor. The resistance goes down when it gets bright out. And so this can sort of sit and stare at the light level in a room. Now what we have to do is we're going to build it into a voltage divider just as we have many times before. And what we know now is that the voltage on the base of a transistor will have to be at least six tenths of a volt higher than that on the emitter in order to turn the transistor on. So what we're proposing here is that why don't we use the cadmium sulfide photoresistor as a voltage divider to monitor the light levels. We know the center point of the voltage divider will vary according to light level here. And what we'd like is to design a voltage divider that sort of stays right at the transistor threshold point, that 0.6 volts that we've talked about a few times. So say, for instance, if the voltage is under 0.6 volts, the transistor will be off and no light, no night light will come on. If the voltage rises above 0.6 volts, then the transistor will be on and we can turn the night light on. So we'd like to sort of configure this voltage divider here so that when it's dark out, the, the voltage here will be above 0.6 volts and we can turn the transistor and um, hence a light bulb on. And if it's too bright out, we'd like the voltage to be below 6 tenths of a volt, so the transistor and the light bulb will be off. Let's see if we can pull that off here. So to do this, we can think a little bit about how these voltage dividers work. Remember when you have two volts and two resistors, named R1 and R2. This is the equation for the output of the voltage divider here. These are the ratios of the resistances. Now we're powering on a 9 volt battery and remember 0.6 volts is sort of our target threshold that we sort of like the voltage divide, divider here never to wander too far from because that's the threshold of the transistor here. So if you look at it carefully we'd really like V out to be a very small fraction of this. We almost need to reduce the 9 volts by a factor of 10 or even a bit more to get V out to be around the 0.6 volt level. And my claim is that we can do that just by looking at this, re this resistance of this ratio of these resistors here, R2 over R1 plus R2. Like, for instance, suppose R1, which is this resistor up here, is very large. If this is very large, then sort of no matter what R2 is doing, you always have sort of this large number just sitting here in the bottom of a fraction, making the overall fraction very small. Remember, if the denominator of a fraction is large, the fraction itself will be small. And that's what we want. If this fraction is small, excuse me, if this fraction is large, I'm sorry, if this fraction is small, I said it right the first time, if this fraction is small, a small number times 9 volts will give a small number, maybe something like 0.6 volts. So what we've done here is we've exploited a property of the, the photocell. We know the photocell has a very large resistance sort of generally when it's dark and it maybe who knows how small it really gets when it's light out. So what we've done is we've placed the photocell in the R1 position, because it's usually its resistance is pretty large, and so we'll always have this large number sitting here. And for R2, we've actually chosen quite a small number right here. We've just chosen our good old 100 ohm resistor. So by and large, the voltage here is going to be set by the, the resistance of the, cadmium, of the cadmium sulfide photocell here, and R2 here is just the 100 ohm resistor, which really isn't even going to be that significant in the bottom right here. And it serves as a rather small number on the top, just 100 compared to maybe 100,000 ohms or more of the photocell here. Again, keeping this fraction small here so that a small number times 9 volts will hopefully give us something small like 0.6. So we sort of have it configured here, and let's just go ahead and take a look at some of the voltages we get here. I'll sort of put the voltmeter on screen here, and let's go ahead and measure the voltages here across the resistor there. So I'm using sort of a slightly different voltmeter here as I've used in previous videos. And so there's sort of the voltage that we get there. So we're getting uh, right now across the lower resistor about 1.2 volts, which is near 0.6. And if I cover it, look at that, the resistance goes down to 0.5 or 0.3. So this is where the transistor would be off. And if I uncover it again, it's coming up to 1.2. If I cover it, it goes down very far again. It looks like, in, and it comes back up again like that. So it seems like I've made a good choice here just by using the 100 ohm resistor that we've used several times 
in previous circuits and the photocell, but using just a tad bit of logic here, in particular the voltage divider equation that we're familiar with here, and again, by placing the large resistor in R2 right here, we're sort of ensuring, excuse me, by placing the large resistor in R1 here, we're sort of ensuring that we have a big number sitting here that'll keep this fraction small and hopefully cut that 9 down to 0.6 or so. So it looks like we sort of achieved it just with the parts in our box here. And so that's actually probably the hard part of the circuit right there is getting that, that range of the resistances to give a voltage divider that sort of wanders around the threshold of the transistor. So let's just say let's wire it up now. So obviously the 0.6 volts that we need for the transistor base to turn the transistor base on or leave it off is going to come right from that center point on the voltage divider. So this wire I'm putting in here is connecting the voltage divider, that voltage that we just saw on the voltmeter, to the base of the transistor to either turn it on or leave it off. I'll connect the emitter here to ground. That's what we've done in all our circuits thus far. And believe it or not, we're almost done with our, uh, our, our nightlight here. Not burglar, I'm a nightlight here. Um, so I'll put the light bulb in, and this is what we want to turn on. So I'll connect the nightlight to the collector and the other side of the nightlight here to the power here. So what will happen is when the transistor turns on, current will be allowed to flow from this lead to 9 volts through the light bulb, out of the light bulb, into the collector of the transistor, and out of the emitter to ground. That'll turn the light bulb on, all if the base can be biased on, can be at 0.6 volts above that of the emitter, which is here, held here at ground. So believe it or not, I believe this is the whole circuit right here. So let's turn it on and see if it works. So here's the battery is now connected, and we see the light is on. So it looks like the light bulb is on when, well, it's light out, and if I cover the photoresistor, the light bulb goes off, and it comes on again. And if I cover it, it goes off. So it seems like I haven't quite built the transistor nightlight that I promised. What we have here is we have a light that comes on when it's light out and goes off when it's dark out. So what can I say? It's a wacky world. We have the basic ideas going right there, but you can clearly see how the transistor is allowing us now to build a circuit that has a little bit of intelligence, doesn't it? You could put all this in a box and say, hey, look, I built a circuit that turns on a light bulb based on the light levels in the room here. It doesn't need a switch and you just sit it in a room and all by itself it'll just quietly turn the light on obviously when it's light out and turn it off when it gets dark out so you've sort of made a bit of intelligence into your electronics design here all comes from the transistor and as long as we're turning stuff on with the transistor you know we can actually replace the light bulb with some of our other sort of higher current devices that we have in our kit here let's just see if we can get the buzzer to do something here so there's the buzzer it's on it goes off when I cover the photocell comes on again, and goes off, comes on and goes off. See, so more intelligence. I have a noisemaker right there. Goes off at night when we want to sleep, comes on during the day maybe to wake us up. Could be an alarm clock that goes on when the sun goes up. There you go. There's a nice use for you. An alarm clock that goes on when the sun comes up. Uh, we could do something with a motor here. So here the motor's on. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's definitely spinning. And it's off. And it's on. And it's off all depending on light levels in the room, all thanks to our transistor in here. So just to rehash the circuit one more time, I hope you see sort of how it works here. I'm just about done with this video. Is that the whole thing is about deciding when to turn the transistor on. And remember, when we want to turn on or off our transistor, we always have to think of that level. We have to think of the level of that, the 0.6 volt level. What are you going to do with it? We know the transistor's on. If the base is above 0.6 volts, we know the transistor is off. If the base is below 0.6 volts, and we know we can use a transistor to switch on high current devices like light bulbs and buzzers, because that's what transistors are for. So if we can just figure out how to work in the logic of that 0.6 volts, we can have it, and we know how voltage dividers work. We know if we put two resistors in series like this and put a voltage across them, the voltage at the center point will be a fraction of that supply voltage in there. And so by just twiddling around with some of the parts that we had, I didn't have much of a plan. I was hoping to be able to do it with the things that we sort of told you to buy in your kit. Knowing how the voltage divider equation works here, we knew that if we set a big resistor down here in this R1 position, then this fraction will always be small. And a small number times 9 might just bring us down to the 0.6 volt level. And we saw with the meter that we sort of luckily got there. We had a nice sweep down to 0 0.2, 0 0.3 volts when it's light out and well above 0.6 volts when it gets dark, so we had no problem switching the transistor on and off in a very unambiguous way there, so it seems to work just fine. Anyway, enjoy.